There are four parts to the test. One, two, three, and four. There will be a pause before each part to allow you to look through the questions. At the end of every pause, you will hear this sound. And look at part one. Part one. You will hear part of a radio program in which details of a competition are announced. For questions one to nine, complete the notes. And it's at this point in the program that we come to the details of our annual competition. We want to hear from you if you're aged between 18 and 25 years of age, and you've started up your own business in the last year. Here on Business Matters, we're looking for a young man or woman to win our Young Entrepreneur Award. Last year, you may remember, it was awarded to Yunus Özel from Turkey. Who set up his own highly successful graphic design agency and now employs a staff of 15 from his office base in Ankara? But we had entries from all over the world and all kinds of business enterprises, keeping bees to micro lighting, jewelry making to fast food. We shortlisted six people out of more than 300 entries, and then sent our reporters to interview each finalist to tell us in more detail how they had gone about raising capital. Finding premises, advertising their business, and impacting on the market. Here's what you have to do: send in your entry. It must be typed on one side of the paper only, and tell us how you got your business enterprise off the ground. Maybe you employ other people. Maybe you run it single-handed. Maybe you're small but growing. Maybe you're already into the export market. Make it interesting reading. Remember, we have to read through hundreds of entries, and you'll want yours to be a memorable one in the minds of the judges. Keep your entry within 350 words, and when it's complete, get an independent witness to verify your entry by signing their name and occupation at the end. This must be someone who is not related to you and who is not a business colleague, but who has known you for at least three years. Don't forget to add your full name and address, the name and address of your business, and give us your daytime phone number so that we can contact you if we need to. The closing date for entries is three months from now. That's June 15. If you want your entry returned eventually, then send us an envelope addressed to yourself, and enclose an international reply coupon. We'll be broadcasting the shortlisted entries the second week in July. So stay tuned to Business Matters. The name of the prize winner will be announced two months after that, in September. Send your entries to Business Matters, Post Office Box One Seven One. That is the end of Part One. Part Two. You will hear a local radio broadcast about transport and travel. For questions ten to sixteen, complete the notes. Using no more than three words in each gap. And now at five to seven, today's roundup of the travel black spots. And I'm afraid quite a few of you are going to experience some problems getting to work this morning. I'll begin with delays caused by roadworks. First of all, motorists heading for the science park are likely to be delayed on the approach road, as there are roadworks with temporary traffic lights just half a mile from the science park entrance. Next, bad news for commuters who use Stadley Station. The thunderstorms over the weekend have caused flooding, which could be dangerous, so the station has had to be closed until the water can be pumped away. One ray of light is that commuters with season tickets will be able to use them on special buses between seven and nine in the morning, which will run from outside the station into the city centre until the flooding has been dealt with. So, if you're a regular, it shouldn't mean too much of a problem. In Chorley Village Centre, an articulated lorry has collided with a tanker on the main road, which is likely to remain impassable for some hours. The only advice at the moment is to steer well clear of Chorley this morning if you can, as there are no diversions. So traffic queues will be severe until the road can be cleared. At the airport, I'm glad to say both internal and international flights are operating, and there are no cancellations notified, in spite of the recent bad weather. However, I should warn you that delays are extremely likely on a number of international flights. 
Advice to travellers going abroad is to check in as normal, but take a good fat book just in case, I'm afraid. Lastly, right in the centre of the city, there are problems on most roads. This is on account of the bomb scare during the night in Central Square. The area which was cordoned off has now been opened up within the last half hour, in fact, but traffic jams have already built up and are unlikely to clear before the end of the rush hour. Well, in spite of all that, I hope your journey today isn't too terrible. Now, to take us up to the news at seven, here is Jerry Morton with today's local weather outlook. That is the end of part two. Part three. You will hear part of a radio program about dancing. For questions seventeen to twenty-two, choose the correct answer. A, B, C, or D. Most of us dance at some time or other, but do you ever wonder why? What is it that makes us dance? In this report, that's what I'm looking into. And I started at a nightclub, where I put that question to Shirley, who was just taking a break from the dance floor. It all happens automatically. I don't know the scientific process, but it's all to do with the rhythm. I mean, when you hear that drum and bass sound, you know, hips start moving, and the next thing you know, you're dancing. You just feel like it, and you have to get up and go with it. I mean, I'll dance to anything. I like everything from the latest sounds right back to the fifties rock and roll, as long as it's cheerful music. The music is obviously a major factor in making people dance, but is it possible to predict what kind of music a particular crowd will dance to? I asked Tony Leach, who for twenty years has been the leader of a dance band who play at parties, weddings, and other social gatherings. The time that I decide what our first song is going to be is approximately five seconds before we start it. I look around and I think, yes, it feels like a slow song or an old rock and roll song or a romantic ballad is right. Sometimes I change my mind later, though.、Uh, I might get to the end of a song thinking that we'll do a particular one next, and then I see their physical attitudes on the dance floor and I think, no, wrong, and instantly swap to something else. Sometimes the way people react to a certain song will tell you a lot about the sorts of things they're going to dance to for the rest of the night. So creating the right mood is essential. But according to Tony, what makes us dance can also depend on other things. Different social groups have different social rules.、Uh, there are occasions where it's the done thing to dance, and so it it almost doesn't matter what's played. Then at other times,、uh, perhaps at company dances, you get people who are embarrassed about dancing in front of bosses. So there's one great social divide, which is between people who think you go onto the dance floor in order to make polite conversation with your partner, and people who go onto the dance floor to to fling their bodies around in time to music. Emma Phillips, a music journalist, thinks that dancing plays a very significant role in the lives of young people in particular. There's a massive club scene going on. These kids—they need to release energy, and they're doing it by dancing to their own kind of music. I mean, every generation needs its own soundtrack, one that just belongs to them. Emma believes, however, that what gets us on our feet depends not just on age, but is also rooted deep within our cultural background. I think dancing does break down the barriers, but it also reveals some of the barriers. By the very fact that some people only dance to a certain kind of music, that reveals something about them. Maybe their social background, you know. Whereas other people might get up and dance to anything, which means they're a bit more open-minded about what's going on around them. So finally, I asked both Tony and Emma how they would sum up dancing. If you look around the world, dance has been a very fulfilling, uplifting, and spiritual thing from the beginning of time. I think dancing should be seen as a, a physical reaction to music in a social situation. As long as people are happy, then things like embarrassment just don't apply.、Um, I think it's the most amazing phenomenon. You only have to play the right music in the right situation, and people get on the dance floor. 
Uh, I think it's a basic human instinct. And you might like to know that Tony and his band, the Kings of Swing, will be featured on Radio 2 this evening at 8.30. That is the end of part three. Part four. You will hear five short extracts in which different people are talking about performances that they have been to. For questions 23 to 32, choose the correct answer, A, B or C. A friend of mine phoned up at the last minute and asked me if I wanted to go to this show. It was being put on by a group of South African singers who were touring this country for four weeks. My friend had heard they were brilliant and this would be the last chance to see them before they returned home. Well, when we arrived, what struck me most was that the stage was completely bare, apart from a few microphone stands. And when they started... It was incredible. I've never really heard anything like it before. They just stood and sang, and all the orchestral noises like drums and violin sounds, they just made with their voices. I was completely spellbound from beginning to end. I'd been looking forward to this show for a long time. I used to be a big fan of James Hopper many years ago. I was hoping he'd do all the old familiar songs, and I think the rest of the audience were too. The thing was, the rest of the band were completely out of time. They just kept losing the rhythm, and some of the old songs were almost unrecognisable. It didn't help that you couldn't hear his guitar very well, and all the voices were a bit distorted. But the audience couldn't get enough of it. They shouted their heads off, cheering and clapping. I was a bit disappointed, though. This was an interesting experience. For a start, the theatre was in Pelman Street. Now, I've walked up and down that street many times, but I never realised there was a theatre there. It was very intimate. It only holds a maximum of 40 people. The show was a big success up in London last year. Huge audiences, but unfortunately, only a handful of people turned up for the performance here. I'm not surprised, though. It was rather amateurish. They could have done with using at least a bit of makeup and learning their parts better. They relied on covering up their mistakes by really throwing themselves into their characters. This was one of the few classical concerts that I decided to go to. As I sat there in the audience waiting for the performance to begin, I spotted quite a few of my colleagues, who I hadn't realised appreciated that type of music. We sat there for quite a while, because the concert was delayed for some reason. When the orchestra finally trooped in, I noticed that one of the trumpeters was Mary Brownlow, who I'd been to school with. I was amazed, because I never realised she was at all musical. But then I remembered that she did play the drums when she was younger, and I think her brother played the violin. Unfortunately, Mary didn't play very well and made quite a few mistakes, especially in the first piece. Well, I thought I'd go to the circus. My friend has a couple of kids who were keen to see it, and they invited me along. I quite enjoyed it, really, even though it tied up a whole afternoon. There were no animals, just clowns, acrobats, people throwing burning sticks in the air, you know, the kind of thing. I think the acrobats made the greatest impact. They must train incredibly hard to achieve such levels of fitness. The whole show lasted a couple of hours, which was about right, but I think we would have gone to the later show if it hadn't been for the kids. That is the end of part four. That is the end of the test.